Ooh, welcome in, welcome back to the channel, guys. Real quick, y'all can see this Dodge Journey, uh, 2012 maybe. I don't know what year it is, but it is in, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, some weird noise. Okay, now, uh, engine noise, transmission noise. I do not know, guys. We will not know until. <laughs> We fire it up right now remember guys i always say this uh be careful starting up a car that's highly suspicious okay now they say noises i they can they don't know if it's trans or engine the hypothetically had it be uh if it's engine type noise one could assume it may be you know internal engine problem uh the engine may however have absolutely no oil in it Okay, in fact, I'm so paranoid, uh, now that I'm talking about it, I don't want to be, I want to lead by example, guys, okay? Only because this engine, or this car is in for noises, uh, very well could be engine oil. I want to fire it, I don't want to fire it up. It'd be low on oil, or no oil, and then it sees up on me, on my watch, okay? That's not going to happen on my watch. So what I'm going to do is uh, a bootleg real good, quick um yes this has oil in it okay so now i will proceed to i gotta get this hood prop fixed or at least let them know about it just gonna let it down um this is started up and see what we have but uh now that my conscience is clear let me proceed with starting it up because if it's transmission that's not gonna damage anything that's not already damaged all right let's see what we got Oh, y'all heard that? Hold on. Turn these wipers off. Let me do that again. Feet on the brake. Oh, wow. Y'all know what that is? Or y'all want to speculate what that is? Oh, listen to that, guys. Okay, the initial crank. Y'all know what happens when you crank a car, when you turn the key? What happened? You just sent a 12-volt signal via a lot of other stuff straight to the starter solenoid when the starter solenoid get that signal it will energize or pull a plunger to allow for the aperture of the starter to engage the flywheel and rotate the flywheel in hopes of starting the engine that whole process went through however from my suspicions when that aperture i might be calling it wrong but when it went out to engage the flywheel because the flywheel sound damage, that's what that noise is. Even now, let's go under the hood. Wow, y'all hear that? Whoa! Yeah, guys, that will fool you. That is not bottom end rod knock or anything like that, guys. I saw a guy in the shop get tricked by that. He was getting ready. He pulled the engine out just to find out the flywheel was cracked, guys. That is what this case is. Okay. So right now the engine is rotating. The fly, the starter job is done. It has one purpose, sole purpose in life, and that is to engage the flywheel and start the engine. Now the starter is done. So the only thing that's rotating now is the flywheel just basically free spinning. No, the flywheel is attached to the torque converter. So it's spinning along with the torque converter, but yeah, that is what they know of this guy. In fact, I want to direct y'all to a video of a complete, this journey is the exact same thing as a caravan, minivan, anything like that. So I'm going to direct y'all to this video right here. In fact, I'm going to end this video and let the rest of this play out with that video. Okay, I'm just going to copy that video and put it in this video so you will get a sense on how to diagnose such a problem. All right. Guys, do not be, be misled into thinking, oh, she need an engine. I've seen it with my own eyes. Mechanic, prominent mechanics, real good mechanics. Well, needs an engine, and they shut the hood. Uh, go through the motion, guys. I'm going to go through the motion with this, but it's going to be off camera. So, like I said, I'm going to direct you to this video. I ain't going to even card it. I'm just going to let the whole video play when I'm done speaking about this one because I know what's wrong with this one, but I want you guys to have a sense of, what I had to do to get to that point and how you can go by visually inspecting for that problem because there's a visual way you can find out if the flywheel is your problem. I speak about that in that video. So without further ado, let me end this 
And don't go anywhere because this video is going to come up right up. Right, the video is about to come up right about now. Welcome back to the channel. Real quick, I want to, well, uh, preferably I wanna, want y'all to hear something. So, I got this car. It's a minivan, uh, about a 2012 model. I want y'all to listen to how this sound when you start it up. Okay, here we go. You might can hear it a little bit. You can really hear it when I put it in the gear. Wow, it gets louder. All right, so I'm gonna go outside and see if you can hear it under the hood, ladies and gentlemen. And you can. Now, the warning I wanna give to y'all is that don't get tr tricked and don't get fooled automatically thinking that's um, a rod or any kind of bottom end engine noise. Because there's a lot of moving parts on the bottom of this drive train meaning the engine and the transmission okay so never just assume like i know one shop uh they hear noises like this they will automatically sell the customer an engine ladies and gentlemen the best way to find out or one of the ways to find out what this noise is first you got to get the car in the air and i'm gonna go out on a limb here only based off uh because of based off i done done a couple of these and i've heard this noise before but I don't want you to just jump into something because I'm saying it. So I'm gonna go over a couple of procedures you can do to check and find out what's causing this noise. But first things first, we gotta get it up in the air, okay? So I'm gonna put the lift under the car and we're gonna let it up. Wow, that's loud. We're gonna let it up in the air. Make sure y'all hear this. I did a video on this earlier, but it was a car. It was a Sebring. And I didn't get to let y'all hear the noise, but on this one, you can hear the noise. All right, without further ado, let's get the car up in the air. I'm gonna shut it off. So like I say, man, we got the, I got the car up in the air now, the van actually. Uh, here's the Telltale uh, inspection cover, so to speak, right here, okay? So it's just four tabs right here. You can remove these tabs, and I can tell from the little rust right here, I can tell already that it's probably uh, the flywheel probably is coming apart. So let me get this cover removed and we will take a look at what's going on. So I have the inspection cover removed. Now, like I said before, based on all that rust, there's a big, huge chance that that flywheel is coming apart. Now, to get a feel for if you think it's come apart to get a better feel you can remove this two of these two little rubber covers off on here i have one of them off so what i'm gonna do is i don't know if y'all can see inside of there but i'm gonna take my screwdriver and pry on the flywheel as i like try to turn it if you hear any clanking uh yes your flywheel has come apart and ladies and gentlemen Yeah, see that? That flywheel is broken. You can hear it, and based on the rust, that's a sign of the flywheel has come apart. So all the rust from the flywheel is like splattering and spreading all over the bell housing area. That, my friend, is a broken flywheel. Now, you have to be careful just, not so much careful, but you have to be, you have to be, well, I use the word careful. You have to be careful when you just going in to replace a flywheel because you have to make sure, I, I heard this from engineers a while back, you have to make sure that the marriage is uh, intact. And when I say marriage, I mean the relationship between the engine block and the flywheel bell housing. So there's two dial pins on each side. So they have to be intact. Everything has to be made it together. That is, will ensure a successful repair because flywheel is not a uh, wearable item. It don't wear out, so to speak. So. When they break, uh, it could be a, from a number of reasons, but you do your part in verifying that it's nothing, uh, it wasn't caused by mating. Mating meaning the, the transmission married to the engine as it comes together. So do your part in making sure that part is intact. But Because again, flywheel is not a wearable item. All right, so I'm gonna end this right here, man. We're gonna write up a flywheel, uh, give an estimate. It's gonna be about eight hours, man, because we're gonna have to remove the transmission and uh, pretty much go from there. All right, thanks for watching, man. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. 
Yeah, see y'all on the next